one. This was the regular scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of New Canaan, Tuesday, October 19th, 2021 at 8.32 a.m. So uh, I think we have to amend the agenda. We have two late arriving items or three. It's got the two, two items. Um, one is the Kiwanis Park drainage work. And the other is the boiler repairs at the police department. So I move we amend the agenda to add these two items. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, it's okay. Um, that brings us to this is a in person meeting today. Sounds sounds pretty good. We're getting better. And um, but it's an in person hybrid meeting. So if we have anybody on, anybody on? Um, first item on the agenda is the minutes uh, of the last meeting on October 5th. And a special meeting. Oh, and a special meeting on September 29th. What was the special meeting about? So we have the joint, the joint meeting. Joint, all boards meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, I move we approve the minutes for the two meetings. I just had one comment. I actually already shared this with Tucker, but I'll just mention that, uh, and I'm not trying to add fuel to embers at all here, but um, just to amend the, uh, or to add to the selectman's comments about the um, the baseball field and that what, where I had added that while it's architecturally viable, it had not included further study on traffic impact on the athletic field usage aesthetics and public input. And if you could kindly add that, I'd appreciate it. Okay, I mean, what it didn't purport to be at that stage. So anyway, right. do you want to uh, amend the minutes? So so uh, any further corrections? Or comments? None here. Okay. Uh, I move we approve the minutes uh, with that amendment. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, we're going to postpone or defer. Uh, I said both both sets. Both. Yeah. <laughs> the ARPA discussion we're going to postpone because the town council is going to discuss that tomorrow night. We're going to postpone it to the next in two week. weeks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sewer, who, Tiger, who's doing this? Good morning, Mr. Rogers. How are you? Uh, we're requesting to realign the sewer on Main Street, uh, 500 feet from Locust East Avenue. The sewer is early 1900s, so it's something that we should do while all the other work's being done. <laughs> so that's why that section will be done. Uh, we received three bids with National Water Main being the lowest bid. $19,800 plus a $3,000 contingency. Not so bad, huh? 500 feet through. Okay. Questions for Jim? Jim? Jimmy, this is a classic while you're at it. Pardon? This is a classic while you're at it because everything else is ripped up. So we might as well. Oh, yeah. Now's the time to do it. Do we just yeah. have to go in at a couple ends and. Yep. Yep. We're gonna, actually, it's like a sock. They put a sock through it, they huh. explode it, and then they uh, put a resin in it. Will this last for another 100 years? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, won't, we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Some, some of us won't. It's, it's like, putting, it, it's, it's like uh, putting in a PVC pipe without digging it up. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. How, I just have one question. How much further do you think you'd have to go to do something like this? Are we done here, or oh, is no, it, this, this is, is just some, a small is percentage of everything that needs to be done over time? Okay. A lot of our sewers are circa 1900. So, how many miles do we have to go? Right. Well, we have 25 miles of sewer. So, just as we go along, if we see any areas of concern, we go back, we TV it, and we get to this, gotcha. this position okay. here. All right. Okay. I move we line the sewers on Main Street <laughs> for um, five. Hundred feet, as described by Jim, for twenty-two thousand eight hundred dollars, which includes the contingency. Um, did I have a second? Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, Mr. Man, Mr. Osman, who's doing this? Erwin Barn Roof. 
So uh, we currently have funds available for the uh, replacing the roof up at Irwin um, Park at the barn. And um, we would like to uh, obtain architect uh, studios to um, prepare all the documents and survey the building and uh, make sure we get the proper job done. Oh, so this is just a preliminary work. Yeah, this is to get the ball rolling. And when will the work be done? I'm going to hold off until go to bid this winter. I'm, I'm watching the market because the material prices are still kind of high. And so I just, uh, it's starting to come down. So we felt that we're okay, you know, get through this winter and then uh, go to bid after the first year. Well, I want to watch the market a little bit. Is there a reason perhaps just to defer a lot of these projects until the markets calm down? It's pretty much what I'm doing. I mean, the money's there. The money I'm, will I'm, be I'm, there. Saying, I'm saying even more, like say, we're going to put off stuff for a year and then see how the um, I'm looking at that with our budget. I talked to Tiger about it and, you know, some of the stuff that's uh, in the five year that we're looking at, uh, we're going to look at the market, see what's going on in the real world and and then make a decision then as to, you know, pushing them out of here. Um, and then the current projects we have, we're looking to, you know, hold them back just a little bit on these. Mm. Um, and then they'll be done next summer. So we're kind of slid behind the our timeline, so to speak, but we're going to definitely look at everything and see what the market, every market's a little different out there. You know, uh, wood materials are starting to come down, but there's still stuff that's being imported. It's hard to get, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take it in a case by case basis. Uh, but Question. at the very least, I'd like to get all the groundwork done on this one and get, so we see where we're at. But the engineering services are not reflective of? No, no, we need all the documents anyhow. Okay. We, we, you know, identify all the full problems. Questions? Just one, can you just remind us We've discussed the Irwin barn roof a while ago, right? Is this? It was last year during budget time. Last year during budget time. Okay, so this is just bringing it up now. We're ready to go. Yeah. Okay. It's that cycle run. Okay. <laughs> how, old, right. how old is the roof? You know, the roof is, um, it's not the original. Um, and that was some of the problem with it. The, the, the original roof is still on it was cedar. And then over the years before we've owned it, they put two more layers of fiberglass on it, which is... Not quite a good point, but also that's what's causing the problem. The roof, mm -hmm. the top layer is actually coming off. That's what I remember you, see, you saying. You can see spots yeah. of it where it's where we're losing the roof. Um, and we're uh, just doing some structural review on the building too. It's a great building. It really is. It's my favorite building, but it's a great building. So we want to make sure we preserve it right. We did a lot of work. We did the windows. We we painted it. We, we basically did all the uh, facade except for the roof now. Speaking of roofs, is the Gorse Pavilion done? The roof is, yes. Sure. Yes, yes. Or we still got a little bit of drainage stuff to do, but... Uh, I've gotten a lot of compliments on it. What's good? Uh, we'll have some pictures for you folks during uh, the budget uh, cycle. Though. Questions? Yeah. Jody finishes. No, no further questions? No further questions. I move we approve the request from Public Works to enter into a contract with Architectural Preservation Studio for a total of 19350 which includes the contingency for the uh, investigation, architectural, and document services for the replacing the urban barn roof. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thanks, Bill. Mr. John Howe. Everything's down here for Tiger. Then he. Yeah. How are you, John? I'm good. So, alligator. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have? Okay. The first one is um, softball and baseball field repairs. Why don't we take these together? Six and seven? Yep. Okay. Okay. So. It, they are so are, are related. Um, six is the actual work, and this is anything from removing sod lips to spreading the clay, which is the purchase of that is in seven. Um, you'll notice that the contingency of ten percent for the the baseball softball work that should be more than adequate. We probably won't even use it. And then the contingency is weird with the clay. The twenty seven hundred is one truckload of clay, <laughs> so there's no reason to go with percentages. So. This work includes all the baseball fields, including the little cutouts at um, South School, which the baseball uses, so. Questions? And the last time we did this, John, just remind We actually skipped last year. Right. With the pandemic, we, we didn't have much play on the field, so we were able to get squeaked by. So it was two years ago that we right. did work similar to this. Okay. Fortunately, we're able to do work on all the fields this year. Quite often we pick, and choose which ones we have to do the most work on. Mm -hmm. So this will be all of them. This will be all of them. This, you know, to all the fields at Waveney, right. two girls softball, the two men's fields, Capo Field, Connor and Sachs, and then Mead, the big fields. There's there isn't any work we need to do down at Mellick and Gamble. 
since it's a, it's it's mainly clay work in the sod right around the edges. Right. So the clay builds up. So we normally do this every year. We normally do some work every year, not to this extent. Okay. So. Catching up. Okay. Yep. Questions further? No. No. I move we approve the re uh, request from Public Works to uh, enter into contracts with Athletic Field Services for a total of 62,920 and Dura Edge Products Company for a total of 32,357 for the uh, rehabilitation of the uh, baseball diamonds as John just described. I'll second. Um, further discussion? None here. All in favor, unanimous. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, John. Now, oh, Tiger. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Uh, so this is um, a request to buy a new van for uh, Getabout, um, similar to what we had purchased in the past uh, through VMI. This is for a new 2021 Toyota Sienna hybrid commercial with an ADA conversion kit. Uh, <clears throat> the total cost is $59,750 uh, and Getabout is making the funds available to the town for the purchase. At present, we don't have a trade-in value of the existing unit. It's got a blown transmission. We think it's about $3,000 worth of uh, trade-in at present, but we might look to bring that back into our fleet for, and then get rid of something. So when that, when that money go back to, to get about? They were, we, we've talked to them about that. They weren't, either we would buy it from them at $3,000 or trade in at $3,000 and give them the money. Yeah. Where would we use that van in our fleet? The IT department has made a request. Um, they've been driving from here throughout town to St. Luke's and around and uh, trading it, changing out all of our services and uh, systems. And uh, they were um, utilizing their personal vehicles every day, all day. So the request was there. So we're, we're evaluating that request at present. This would be a good fit for them if we can make it work. You have to replace the transmission though, no? Yeah, well, the transmission's three, about three grand. The trade-in's about three grand. It's kind of a wash at that point in time. We'll have to see. But it's got 70,000 miles on it, it's, and it's not that old. It's in pretty good shape. You know, the seats are a little worn. Other than that, there's not much. And it's an open back. Can't they call Rich and ask Rich to bring stuff over? I mean, is Rich? Not necessarily, no. They, they have everything right, we'll talk about this. <laughs> That's the only 70,000. I, I didn't say we were going to fulfill the request. I said it was a request. So <laughs> it would have to come back to you for a fulfillment at that point. A blown point. transmission at 70,000 miles? Isn't that a little early? I, you know, I, I can't speak to the usage. <laughs> what, how, how many um, vans do we have? I get about. I'm not quite certain. Six or seven? Six or seven, I thought. Yeah. I think they had to have more. Yeah. At one point, they wanted to add add to their fleet was what their thought was because of increased services, increased need, actually. Uh, I think but has there been less or more need because of the pandemic? More. More. Yeah. And where do we maintain these with the fleet? The vehicles are maintained where? And our highway department takes care of some of the maintenance and then some of the maintenance is, is farmed out. I mean stored. Is it? They're stored at the at the railroad station at the lumber. All, all of them? All of them. Okay. And get about re reimburses us for the maintenance. Correct. An excellent public private partnership. It is indeed. I move we approve this request from Public Works to purchase a new 2021 Toyota Sienna hybrid commercial ADA van. But get about with funds provided by get about. Sorry, a second. A second. For the discussion. All favor. That's unanimous. Thank you. Jim. Uh, this is a big item. This is a big item. Go ahead, boss. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> We're requesting uh, to do an inflow study in the town sewer system, inflow and infiltration study. This is when uh, we were, we're seeing an excessive amount of water at the treatment plant. And it's getting progressively worse. The past two storms that we had uh, brought us right to the limit of what the plant can handle. And we have to evaluate the, the sewer system. It's something we have to do. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we're going to request to have ACOM, our consultant engineers, do a study for us uh, for the amount of $200,000. Uh, 
and they'll come back. What we'll do is we'll set up gauges throughout the town, uh, flow meters throughout the town in the sewer system. And how many, uh, we're not too sure yet. We're gonna do a study as to you know, how many we should put out there. He'll come back with us with a report and then we'll move forward from there as to what we should do to correct the problem. Like I said, the plant was designed to handle 7 million. We were right at 7 million. And uh, luckily we have a containment area where we could put sewage into during the storms, but we just made it last time. Uh, prob problem here is if we don't do it, eventually the state could come back and we could put a moratorium on us to where we can't hook up any more uh, laterals anymore, buildings. So uh, now's the time to move forward and so just the situation. So Jimmy, I, I mean, I know that the purpose of the study is to, to figure out what's going on, but what's your guess is to educate oh, so guess? Yeah, we have illegal sump pumps, number one. We have okay. what, I'm sorry? Old some pumps, some pumps. pumps into our sewer system. Right. A lot of them are done illegally. Uh, so Le illegal sump some, uh, Illegal sump uh, pumps. Uh, oh, yes. okay. Yeah, they're supposed to be hooked to the storm storm system, storm drain system, that, but they hook them to the sewer system. So we'll, we'll see a big spike right. uh, during a storm. You'll take your sump pump and you'll hook it into your washing machine outlet, you know, so then it'll come straight through and it's <clears> us <throat> instead of- So these are here. residential yes. home, homeowners, not- yeah, And we know, we know this- because we know this. I mean, it, it, you have. We can see the number at the plant as far as when it starts to rain. You can see the volume increase in skyrocket. When did this problem start to really manifest itself? Uh, about the past 10 years, I would say. We've seen it get progressively worse. The plant's been able to handle it. But uh, again, this is. So it's homeowners with, with water problems. Yeah. And they just get a sump pump and then they just hook it up. They just hook it up to the sewer. Right. Right. So what we'll have to do is, you know, we'll, we'll find certain areas. If we see that the uh, an area is uh, dedicated to where we have to go look at, we might have to enter the homes, you know, see if it's hooked up illegally. Our biggest problem is we're going to make sure that there's a place for them to put the water, uh, that there is drainage. Can, can you remind homeowners what they're supposed to do? It's on the website. And then, you know, we could send something out. We can put it in the newspaper. You know, we could say that we're doing this study now and that it, so we have to spend two hundred thousand dollars, which I presumably is not in the budget because this is part of the it's in the major ma maintenance reserve. Is it ma major maintenance, correct? Yeah, yeah. And again, our permit requires us to uh, do us not specifically do this study, but we have to show the state that we're proactive in regards to the collection system. And this is really step one to being proactive. But does proactive mean going out and talking to homeowners who have broken the law with respect to some pumps? Because it's having an impact on the entire community. Oh, yeah. Eventually, we're going to have to do that. Yeah. We have to find out which areas we really have the problem with. In other words, we have, th I want to say, three sections of in the collection system. We have three pump stations. And what we'll do is we'll put flow meters at the pump stations. We'll put flow meters in, in the sewers themselves. And then just come up with a, an idea. So you can identify on a house-by-house -house basis? No. 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 no, no. Just an area. Street area. Right. We did it on a limited basis on Kimberly a number of years ago where we were having a problem similar to this. And then we reached out to the homeowners and then put in a drainage line for them to actually hook up to because there was no place for them to go. At that point in time, they would have been outletting out to the street. So we wound up extending our drainage line up Kimberly and then notified the homeowners that now that we have a drainage line, now you can hook up. So that was because people on Kimberly had... Kimberly had set up problems. Yeah. illegal yeah. pumps. Yeah, some pumps. And then what, what we noticed during new home construction, they were running into groundwater issues and other problems. So then they were having some pumps running. And then the only area that they could do is outlet it onto the street. So we were having water running down the edge of the street, which then caused an icing problem during the winter. So we extended the drainage lines to then tell them, hey, you need to hook up. That was not a very But, but for new construction, I mean, presumably this is within the, ramp, the purview of the building inspector, correct? Correct. New construction isn't the issue. It's, it's so it's existing construction where they add on. The big pump. issue too is that you could go in, they could disconnect it. You walk out the door, they'll connect it back. Right. So that's happened in the field and other towns too. Right. You know, so, I mean, this is something we ought to address, but along with that is you know, gutters are tied into our sewer system, which is illegal. Uh, summertime, if it's just, if you picture this, our plant runs around 600,000 gallons during the summertime. That's the driest time. If we get a thunderstorm, we'll see it peak during a thunderstorm. That's not groundwater. That's not water coming up from the ground. 
springtime, we, ex we expect that. But if you see this peak during a thunderstorm, you know it's inflow. We call it inflow. Inflow. So it's, it's a so, direct hookup to our yeah, sewer okay. system. Okay. So, so you, 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 you do a study and then you identify a location or an area that's particularly problematic with respect to this. Come back with a plan how to address it. Right. And that may include an outreach to the residents in that neighborhood right. and say, hey, you know, you, we've identified inflow in particular from your neck of the woods, you know, well, let's, let's talk about it, right? And that along with uh, aging the sewers, if the sewers are cracked, we're gonna get infiltration, right? You know, this will address that too, right. you know, okay. these pickups, the areas where we have to address it. Right, That's the good. item that you just, you know, the, the relining prevents that infiltration, right? Because right. then we reline the pipes so that we won't get infiltration through this, through the joints of the pipe. Which itself. is just what we voted on. Which is exactly what yeah. you voted on prior, right. right? So it's a, it's a two part process, you know? Okay. Um, the inflow and the infiltration. Um, we can handle the infiltration on our end. The inflow is necessarily a little bit of uh, public education and outreach, but we need to know the areas we need to target. Okay. Um, and plus, it would be a quick fix. Don't get me wrong, like a quick fix. In other words, it's it's hooked directly. So if we find gutters tied right into it, then that's easy to fix. Infiltration. Now we're talking relining sewers, and the, you know, so this is this is step one. Okay. Very helpful, guys. Thank you. No problem. Just a, sure. just a fo quick follow on. So if you're a new homeowner buying a home and you get it uh, inspected, they would come back, presumably if it was illegal, they would be able to identify if it was if properly put in or, Ill I beg your pardon? If they're doing their job, yeah. If they're doing their job, okay. I'm looking for that. And then they would contact you and say, how do I get this to be set up properly? Is that the idea? Okay, yeah. and, and that information is provided in the website. That you right. mentioned, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, on the website. Yeah. About how to do that. Okay, thank you, Jim. Did the flow meters stay permanently installed? So we ongoing basis. Yeah. No, this is a, this just is a test. Through. What's the duration of the test? I think it's twelve weeks. If I recall. Why would when, when, we're what looking, time of year would we do it? We're looking for a dry spell and then the wet spell. So they're gonna. Would we do it in the winter as opposed to the rainy season? Well, we we want to see. Basically, you you want a baseline, right? And then you want you want to get it in the springtime. Right. Okay. Anyway, enough, enough information. Let's proceed with the study. It's coming out of the major maintenance reserve. So that uh, mm. if there are no further questions, I move we approve this request from Public Works to enter into a contract with ACOM for $200,000 for professional services to implement and report back to the town on the results of the inflow study of the sewer collection system. Second here. Further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thanks, Jim. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. About that than we ever knew. It's good though. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're back. back. Yeah. <laughs> See you next minute. Huh? <laughs> so uh, the EMT building, the Ambulance Corps building, um, currently draws their heat uh, resource from the police department, and um, we'd like to sever that relationship and put uh, their own standalone uh, twin furnaces in the Ambulance Corps. Um, it's, uh, we've hooked it up to the gas line, so they have natural gas over there. So we would like to uh, give the engineering work, uh, which include all the documents we need to go to bid to, uh, to uh, purchase and install a uh, heating system for the M1 square. This would be the first step. And there's money in the budget. So we were planning this even before we started talking about the That's police correct. station. This, well, had, this had been in the works for a while. Yeah. But, but if we did shut down the building. It has to do this. We'd have to do, we'd, yeah, you'd have to do that. Yeah, we need yeah, but that's why we kind of like push forward on this. There's like right. we need to do this before we're going to do something. Please, I think we all know that whether whatever it is, we're going to do mm -hmm. something. So we need to uh, get that off their um, heat and um, get them on. Get but them would, but would this be required if you renovated in place uh, with? I think I think it was the first option that was presented was that the, the operating, PD's, op, 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 operating in place operating in place. Yeah, yeah, I think thank pretty, you. pretty clearly no one wants to do that. So yeah, right. well, the, the problem you'd but have on is, the other hand, perhaps the heating system. Yeah, even if you did do that, you know, like if you're going to redo the whole police department, there's most likely going to be a whole new type of heating system right. in there right. going to be shut down. It's a it's not going to this is going to be a long project. Let's right. say it takes me 18 months to do that. Hmm. I still have a heat problem, and it's just I just don't like having. One building dependent on another building yeah, to survive. Yeah, yeah. you know, it if I lost, sense. you know, you had potential losing two emergency buildings if something were happened to their furnaces, right? So, uh, we'd like to sever that and just get them on our own. I I think it's a good plan. I what's the timing on this then? 
Bill? Again, we'd like to get this um, out to bid uh, right after the holidays um, and then do the work uh, come So summer. would we expect to have it by summer? Is that what you said? Yeah. 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 Okay. After the heating season. Yeah, after, after the heating, heating yeah. system, right. Where would they put the boilers? Uh, right now, we've been looking at an area that's in the off the, um, there's a closet and a small washer and dryer room in the uh, ambulance garage itself. So we talk about taking that space on the real little kit to washer and dryer and a little storage room and use that. But um, I need to do the engineering to see how much space I actually need. It'll fit. That, in that that's area. amazing. But, yes, yes, fired what? <coughs> burners. They're small. Yeah. Are, they're as big as a suitcase for a house. Yeah. It's amazing how small mm -hmm. they are now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So we may get away with just taking a closet and not their laundry room. I don't know. We're, we're going to figure it out. But I've been in com uh, communication with them over there. They know it's coming. We've been coming up with some ideas over there. Good. In addition to the heating system, was there anything else that connected the, so the generator? The generator and, to the police station yeah, at EMT. And we're going to look at that. That's going to uh, be part of our next year's budget and, request. And the sewer too. line. Excuse me? And sewer, sewer line. line. Yeah. Nice, the sewer yeah, line? sewer line comes through. And under. That's, what, that's, what Brian, oh. that's what Brian Hume said. Oh, okay, so we have the sewer line into it. And the, and the, and the, uh, and the telecommunications? Communications. But I, I imagine if it, communications will probably always remain where it is. I, I talked to Chris Kaiser about the communications. Yeah. We have uh, they need they, they need the antennas and... Yeah. You can't go that high without being on that roof. So, mm -hmm. right. Great. So, I guess this is the first piece first of, of several for, things. We got to start somewhere. Well, I guess yeah. we'll start with the heat, right? <laughs> yeah. Further questions? I move we approve this request from Public Works to enter into a contract with Marchetti Consulting Engineers for a total of 14650 which includes the contingency for the investigation, engineering, and document services for adding boilers to the EMT building. Second. Second. Further discussion? None here. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you, Bill. Mm, I'll stick with you guys. So you're doing the cleaning services? Too. Cleaning service. Yeah. Cleaning contract, yeah. So um, we have our um, cleaning contract with Janpro at Southern Connecticut. Right now, we're doing uh, quite a few, well, all our buildings, basically. And um, there's been some problems. Um, a lot of it stems from labor issues. And getting good quality work and getting people has been a bit of a problem. And um, so we try to work through this for a couple months with them. It's just been very difficult. And GM Pro is a franchise, they're a corporate and it's franchised out. The original owner of the GM Pro in our area sold out to a place in Hartford. And it seems like it's uh, been performing as well as we'd expect um, with all the current issues going on. So we're, we're proposing that we have the right to do a change order in the contract, um, which we talked to Jean Pope out there. They, they, they agreed to the change order. So we'd like to remove um, the 13 locations um, from their contract. And then we'd like to reallocate those 13 locations to um, PM Partners Cleaning Service. You know, Partners were the ladies who own a company here in Norwalk that were actually uh, used to clean our buildings for seven years. And then they, uh, they lost, the bid. they lost the bid last time because of the franchise type relationships. Um, had the men spoke to them, and um, they're on board. They they can um, they can handle it. It's nice to have them local. Um, they did a good job for us back then, so we like to bring those back in to do these buildings. We still kept Jam Pro on doing some of our buildings. Split the town in half, and at this point, I'd like to try this having multiple companies do our cleaning services. Um, short of that, would discussion we had? Do we hire full time cleaning staff? I'm trying to avoid that, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to try breaking the contract up a little bit and see how this works. Question How big is the uh, other contract that we have with Jan Pro? So this was 95. We're taking it was that a away. Less than this one. I think yeah. it's, it's going to be it's a little less than with this one. Um, and so they're I don't know the data was in sorry. It's very close to half. It's, so. very, it's, okay. it's very close to okay. half. Um, it, they're getting more buildings um, because there's seasonal stuff involved. Mm -hmm. So basically from, um, and then SI town is going to be the Norwalk group. Everything in this complex around here will be the GM Pro group. Um, the group that GM Pro has on the franchise take care of our buildings around here, they worked out really good. They came in um, several weeks ago and they proved themselves to be very good. And uh, Anna's been, I know she's been really helping out a lot, you know, managing these people over here too with me. So uh, I think we have a good okay. place right now. So. 
further questions, I move we approve the request from Public Works to enter into a contract with PM Cleaning Services for seven ninety five thousand or ninety four seventy six for cleaning services at thirteen town owned buildings. Town buildings. Okay. Second. Further discussion. All in favor. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Bill. To the, uh, the last the ad. What bill still sitting here? Police department. Boiler repair. Boiler repair. Boiler replacement at the police department. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's two boilers in the police department. Um, this one here is the uh, one that was added in 2007 when they did the work over Hamlet's Corner. They did the upstairs police department. Um, we discovered that there was some water water leak leaking from it, and then we discovered uh, one of the service guys down there that combustion gas is actually escaping the uh, the chambers on it, so we had to shut it down. Um, it's not uncommon. It's a sectional boiler. You have gaskets between them. You know what happens? They blow a gasket out between them, or sometimes they crack. Um, you can't just do one gasket where it is because it's so big. Each section is about 700 pounds. So they have to take the whole boiler apart and just re gasket the whole boiler and um, put it together. It's a labor intense job. It's all labor. And um, so we're proposing to uh, get each mechanical down here to do this work. Um, the total is 14,206. One correction on the memo, it's a 20% contingency, not 10%. Uh, I'd like to have that 20% in your case, but you have to buy some sections. Um, we'll, the money's already in there. Okay. Okay. Um, so this building can't operate on one boiler through the winter? No, uh, you know, because you're trying to do two buildings again. And, you know, um, and the problem happens, there's a lead and lag, but both boilers will run when I start running into this 20 degree weather for two, three days and starts dropping, then I need both boilers to run to keep both buildings up to temperature. We can always bring in the portable boiler. Like cheaper to do, it. cheaper, cheaper, cheaper to do, to do this. this. <laughs> portable one was very expensive, yeah. if you remember. I know. Like sorry. $40,000 yeah. in rent one. It was a joke. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd rather not go down that road Don't, don't jinx those, please. <laughs> All, right. All right, but we don't think this is serious. It just needs to prepare. It, well, um, I'm actually um, timing was a little off, so I'm meeting the actual manufacturer representative uh, after this meeting over there to go through it because they do warranty cast iron sections to a degree. Labor is, is the expense, you know. Um, so as long as we can get out of these guys, kind of help. Um, we'll try. I'll do the best. The other boiler is newer. The other boiler is actually older, but we resealed that one a few years ago, um, and that was the original boiler, and it's been going strong. Uh, it seems like older stuff seems older, more better than the newer stuff. Mm. Okay, that further questions? Mm. So I move we approve the request from Public Works to enter into a contract with Eastern Mechanical Services for 14,206 plus a contingency um, of 10%. 20, 20%. 20%. 20%. 20%. Um, for boiler repairs at the police department. Second. Second. Further discussion? Not here. Favor? Aye. Yes, Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, who's doing want to spark drainage work? Hmm? You want to do drainage or you want to do trees? Let's do well, well, it doesn't matter. Okay. I got trees in front of me and I'll still go over the tree uh okay. the drainage. The um uh, we went out to bid for our latest bid, October 7th. There's one out right now that is uh due back in two days, October 21st. We had two bidders come back out of the seven that uh, receive uh, requests. Olmstead was the low at 24,420. Davy Tree was at 26,220. So they were quite tight through the uh, 13 separate items or 13 separate locations. It is interesting to note, last time I noted the, uh, it was over 50% that were uh, ash trees. Again, it's uh, nine ash trees out of the 15 trees being removed. Uh, nine of them were ashes. We're seeing this, this problem is gonna continue, you know. Um, for the next several years as we move forward. Um, Olmstead's done very nice work for us and we'd like to uh, award this contract to them for 24, 420. Questions? I move to approve the request from the tree warden to enter into a contract with Olmstead Tree and Shrub Care Company LLC for 24,420 to uh, remove prune or st and stump removal at various trees in town. Second? Second here. Good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, the next is uh, drainage Aquinas Park. Did this hit your tablets? Because I have I have paper copies. Um, we've got copies. Okay. <clears throat> I, just, I, I apologize. I sent it out early this morning. Um, 
we received a quote from Hussey Brothers Excavating for 12725 to do some drainage work at Kiwanis Park. What we have is we've got water flowing out of the parking lot down the access road uh, and then flooding out the Mary B cabin, actually flooding their walkway and causing an icing condition during the winter. And then it's continuing on down the access way and then off into the river, but it's actually washing the entire uh, area in front of the Mary B away. So they've lost uh, a considerable amount of uh, material in front of their um, in front of their facility itself. We've uh, been noticing this problem for a while. Maria went out, took a look at it, our town engineer, and uh, came up with a nice design for five separate catch basins and a, and a drainage line to run through. We uh, met with the people from the Mary B cabin, the um, Girl Scouts, told them what we were planning to do. And uh, we'd like to go forward with this work and get this done before the winter. Um, Cause if not the, the first uh, uh, slushy rain will ice up the, the walkway again, we'll have a, we'll have a considerable problem with a uh, slip trip and fall there. So we'd like to give this uh, award, this contract to Hussey brothers for 12,725. Question. That's a good project. Was this bid out or? No, this is just the one quote. Uh, Housey Brothers has done some a lot of work in that area, and we think that they're probably the best suited for this. We're, we want somebody who's going to come in and then dress up the area as they walk back out again and make it as nice as possible for uh, for the cabin and uh, and the Girl Scouts themselves. So we think he would be the the best fit for this work. Plus, he has room in his schedule. There's a you know, most of the contractors now are extremely busy. Um, with work, it's very, very difficult to get scheduling. Okay. I move to approve the request from Public Works to enter into a contract with Husky Brothers for 12725 as, as uh, Tiger described for the uh, drainage work at Juanis Park near the Mary B. Cabin. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Happens. Thank you, Tiger. That brings us to what's on my mic? New employee? <laughs> sure. Where you think you're going. Thought I was done. Did I skip over public comments? Yeah. No, I think you mentioned it. I mentioned it, but, yeah. but, but I didn't mention that you know comments would be received by email as well. So anyway, someone's watching today. Apparently. <laughs> They're always watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we would like to present Jeff Manella. Uh, he and we had 21 applicants for this position. Um, we did, we were supposed to interview four. We ended up interviewing three. One of the applicants took a job before the interview. Uh, so we would like to present Jeff. He does have a CDL, supervisory experience, landscaping, snow plowing, and we do think he would be a great addition to uh, our public works department. Right, for the highway department. Questions? It's not specifically about Mr. Manella, but just in general, would they keep their own businesses? I see he has his own landscaping business. and We did talk to him about that, and he will be keeping it, but bringing it down to a couple of clients. He understands that New Canaan comes first when it snows, leaf season, okay. Saturdays, he needs to be here. Okay. Right now he has one employee with him, and then so he has whatever he can manage at that point. He'll be bringing it down for just and keeping a couple select clients. Okay. A number of our staff do the exact same. And yeah, we have that's my figure. Yeah, yeah. A number okay. of our staff have landscaping businesses or have clients on plowing the or plowing yeah, what have you, right. and we've never seen an issue. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, I move to approve the request from Public Works. No, from the resources to hire Next and Public Works to to hire <laughs> Jeff. Manella as an equipment operator too in the public works department. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Tiger. Actuarial services. This is a joint presentation by yeah. CFO and the <laughs> HR director. So in front of you, you have a contract from Hooker and Holcomb. They have been our actuaries for 10 plus years. Uh, as you know, Diane Wilson moved over to Lunda as the comptroller, and we have lost her in that position um, as helping us with our retirees and our pensions. So we went to Hooker and Holcomb. They do have a service that they offer for 
many communities where they will build a porthole for us and our staff so that when somebody knows if they are retiring or they would like to get an estimate that they can do it themselves. Um, we will also have Hooker and Holcomb doing all of our calculations when somebody retires. When you look at the fees, this will be a savings to the town of approximately 40,000 um, plus a benefit package that we will not be taking on. Um, in working with Hooker and Holcomb, I, we are still gonna be doing the handholding. We still are doing it now. There are many retirees who don't have computers or um, the children are taking care of them. So we're gonna continue to do that. But I think this will be a nice addition for our staff to be able to go on and be able to do some of these calculations that we've been doing. So we are hoping that you will approve this contract. And then as far as funding, um, because this is related to uh, retirement, uh, these are not general fund dollars. Uh, so these are funds that are um, in our um, in the pension plan. Pension, pension, pension plan pays the expenses of the operating yes. plan. And as you said, Charlie, we're going to save money in the long run. We are. And even when you look at um, the part where they're estimating um, that based on 15 to 20 hours, um, for participant services, I don't think that that's going to go much over 10. Um, I do think that most of the questions our retirees have, we will be able to answer. I think it's more when a retiree passes away and a spouse has questions, but I don't even see that we're going to be that high in that area. So, Plus you and Mimi will become the, uh, we already have. the internal experts <laughs> and, and we always have Diane down the hall. So exactly. Correct. It's win, 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 win. Win. Correct. <laughs> so, so that actually, just that was my question, actually, too. So, it, it will be Mimi or Diane who will continue the relationship with Hooker and Holcomb, or Mimi. it will be you. It will okay, be great. And Added to Mimi you. will have that, and Diane is going to continue to work with the Board of Finance on the pension, so she's going to have it. So, we're kind of taking one position and splitting it into four. <laughs> so. Great. More questions? I move we approve the request from the Director of Human Resources to enter into an agreement with Hooker and Hall for an estimated annual fee of fifty-eight five to sixty-nine thousand per year, plus calculations for actuary on consulting services for the town. Second. Second. For the discussion. All in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Linda. Linda, you're going to hang around for. Okay, well, you'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Contracts under 10,000. Any questions about contracts under 10,000? It's just one, right? I haven't been able to look, check my tablet this morning. It's just, uh, I think there's just one. Yeah, no questions. License plate readers? Yes. No questions about that. Um, legal bills on the tablets? I move it. Any questions? I did just in general, not a specific question, but um, I think as I looked at it, we're so we're a quarter into the new fiscal year and we're at um, 22,000. I'm just trying to get a sense for legal, legal, legal fees are lumpy or seasonal, right? Or lumpy, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're comfortable with where we are relative to the whole budget? Yeah. We, yeah. Always, okay. we can always put the brakes on later. Okay. Great. Thanks. Stop doing things. Um, I move to approve the legal fees on the tablets. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor? That's unanimous. Everybody's unanimous this morning. Um, tax overpayments. Um, I, I also can't look at them, so. Oh, here. They're all motor vehicle. Yeah. I have no questions. And usual churn with people changing cars, so. Right. Um, I move we approve the refunds for tax payments on the tablets. Second. Next seconds. All in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. That brings us to Selectman's comments. I really didn't have much uh, to talk about. Um, the COVID cases remain low, as you can see by the weekly call out. Um, the the uh, vaccination clinic on Thursday is going well. Um, you'll hear on Thursday about, well, as you've read in the newspapers, the uh, other vaccines are being approved for second doses or booster doses. And um, most of our seniors got Moderna in the beginning, so that should ramp up in the next couple of weeks. Um, the testing continues two days a week. 
at the uh, Irwin House is working out very well as a location. So that um, besides COVID, I'm not sure I have anything else to mention. Any comments? Just a question on the, the number of testing. Is that gone up or down or about the same each week? T testing is moderate. I mean, and moderate. It, it includes our town employees who are required to do weekly testing who are not vaccinated. So right. um, some of whom are doing the rapid test and right. only the PCR if they need to. So uh, anything else you want? Anyway. I just wanted to uh, add that um, just as a follow-up to our last meeting, and so uh, the work that uh, we're all doing together with uh, Tiger Man and Deputy Chief uh, De Federico, um, some great progress there. And so I just wanted to commend uh, Tiger and John uh, for the work they're doing there. Uh, with respect to the traffic common group meetings, um, Deputy Chief De Federico actually had a great idea that to work with the website in terms of having a continuous flow, if you will, of interaction between the community on any public safety, whether it's uh, pedestrian or vehicle uh, safety. So that's we're working on that. So that's good good progress there. More to report on. And uh, Tiger is also working with. Um, Michael Galante in terms of uh, looking at the uh, particular spot, but there's lots of spots, but on 106 and Canoe Hill and uh, Carter Street. So more to come on that. I just wanted to also say, um, so we have a, a debate tonight and I hope everybody has an opportunity to watch uh, with a sponsored by the League of Women Voters. It's a particularly tough time. Nick and I just said that it's a, it's a tough time and, and uh, We'll be glad when the election season is over. Uh, I do want to say, and I wish everybody well in terms of the debate. I think everybody has seen that there's been some a lot of um, unfortunate uh, unanimous, or excuse me, anonymous uh, letters, uh, a letter that came out, and uh, it's I I find it offensive. Unfortunately, it's anonymous, uh, and so it's a uh, can't really point to anything about it but other than to say that it's completely. Um, file and inappropriate in our town. So um, just wanted to share that and hopefully if we move past that and uh, too much racially charged uh, innuendo there. So anyway, want to move forward and be positive and, uh, and I hope that we all can do so. No, I would just <clears throat> echo uh, Kathleen's reference to the debates. You can't go in person. Just to Correct. remind yourself, so folks want to Follow along. You have to do it on. Is it Zoom? Is that channel, going to be channel, channel seventy nine and yeah. the uh, YouTube uh, for YouTube, League of right. Women Voters? But is, it's just going to be the candidates and the, the moderator and the, the contested candidates. Contested, contested, yes, contested candidates. <laughs> contested races. Um, so we're going to go into executive session uh, to discuss a potential real estate transaction. We will not vote when we come out. So. Uh, um, this will end the meeting um, at 9.19, and we will invite into the executive session who? Linda and Tucker and Tiger, why don't you join us? Thank you all. Have a good morning. Hang on, I got to So it's 10.13, we're coming out of executive session and um, there is no vote. So I move we adjourn uh, at 10 to 10.13, second. Thank you all, have a great day.